There's a lot going on in the solar system. We had a brief geomagnetic storm. We have tons of energy around the Earth. This magnetosphere simulation actually measures energy. And energy created by particles. So the more energy, the more particles, usually. Um, uh, it's an ocean of energy. I never thought I would use that term, but that's because we're in an ocean of particles. And notice that swirling motion counterclockwise near the bottom of the simulation. We're going to come back to that. Earthquake situation, ridge crest. What's going on? I'll tell you. It's the edge of the Great Basin. And the Great Basin is a super mega caldera. And all our calderas are stirring, including this one. Long Valley Super Volcano uh, is the most seismically active super volcano on Earth. And that brief but intense aurora, kind of narrowly defined, not so widespread. But yet, when you look at the sun, there are no sunspots to cause auroras, and there are no coronal holes. So, what created all that intense, brief moment of an aurora? When we look at the simulation, this is looking down on the solar system. You can see the sun off to the right. You'll see particles just keep fluxing in one wave after another. The unusual thing about this wave is that it does not compress the magnetosphere. Therefore, the particles must be small. And since we see actually in writing the NOAA report, high electron flux with no protons, then we know what these particles are. They're electrons. The thing different about what we're seeing happening now is we're instead of a central ejection point you know, right off the center of the Earth into the tail stream, we're starting to see the solar wind or whatever this electron wind, we're starting to see it wrap around and favor one side of the simulation versus the other, the top versus the bottom. And in this case, it's the front of the Earth versus the back of the Earth because you're looking down on the Earth. And we're starting to see those little counter rotations um, near the poles and smaller in scale, but yet occurring at, at one side of the Earth versus the other. And we still think it's because these are low energy electrons and they're wrapping around still. Doesn't matter if they're lateral plane, vertical plane. When they try to go by the poles, the poles pull them back around and they loop back around, creating a like a whirlpool of swirling motion. Look closely where the light blue meets the dark blue. When the, wherever that boundary hits or is located, generally you'll see reversals in those vectors. Those arrows are the direction that the particles are traveling. And usually that boundary areas is where you see reversals and changes, big changes in direction and speed. But some of those ejections you see are a little bit more uh, to the side and not directly center symmetrical in the tail stream like they used to be. And that swirling motion is creating havoc with our magnetic fields. It's a looping our magnetic field lines. And the question is, is where are all these electrons coming from? And why are we having geomagnetic storms with nothing on the sun to show for it? And here, uh, this is now the Earth is coming right at you. Uh, this is a vertical cut. The sun is off to your right. You see those particles just wafting in one after another, wave after another. But amazingly, those vertical blue lines that are supposed to be chasing after and following the sun's wind, they are not following the sun's wind. They're stalling out and actually going in the wrong direction. And here's why. Well, looking down on the solar system, you can see the direction of flow of that swirl would take those electrons from left to right in this simulation. And that is why those blue magnetic field lines, interplanetary magnetic field lines, are not chasing after the wind is because the wind is swirling back around and creating a backward motion making it appear that those blue vertical lines are going in the wrong direction. 
which they are which they are but now you know why it's it's the turbulence and the vortexing in the tail stream and also there's looping on this cut so it's looping both in the vertical plane and in the lateral planes looking down on the earth and looking directly at the earth you see that those magnetic field lines looping so they're looping in both planes vertical and in horizontal which tells me we're in an ocean of particles a sea of particle a lake so to speak again you see the uh, some of the pulsations are, are rippling more than creasing the magnetosphere which particles usually crease the magnetosphere they kind of compress it and that's not happening but boy this sure is a lot of turbulence a lot of crossing of the field lines and a lot of disruption in the interplanetary magnetic field now well here's what's happening the wind is starting to travel a little faster now because as earth goes around to the opposite side of the sun that the brown dwarf is on the helium and the electrons coming from that brown dwarf are now traveling roughly in the same direction as the sun's wind so when they're not opposing each other then guess what the sun's wind can travel any faster even even faster um, and that's what's happening we're starting to see this the the wind go from 350 kilometers a second up to 450 500 kilometers a second according to the latest readings so as the sun as the earth goes behind the sun and and vectors with that you can see that the gravitational focusing cone we're going to start catching the edge of that and that's what we're doing we're catching the edge of that focusing cone it's widespread it's diffuse it's low energy electrons but there's a lot of them and so when the NOAA report says high density high density of low energy electrons well you know, most electrons coming off the sun are higher energy so when you see the streams you know that are towards the bottom of the simulation would be traveling in the same direction as a spiral wind while at the top of the simulation they would be running opposition which is why when we get on one side of the sun sometimes the wind seems to slow down and we get on the other side the wind seems to be running faster depending on what side of the sun you are and that's because of the flow of the second source of solar wind there's more than one source of solar wind in our solar system and you can see the where the location was we're almost not quite a year now but almost a year in tracking this thing we've vectored the earthquake vectors and the alignments and where they cross is where is where this thing is supposedly located um, and the solar wind anomalies I just showed you the picking up of the speed the widely diffuse low energy electrons th those are going to increase both in energy and in density and in speed as we get into the heart of the focusing cone and it's really not well defined yet because this thing is moving so fast um, but once it hangs out there where it's where it's been um, in, a, in a relative position it will send more and more solar wind from a radiant point and it'll become much more specific and directional and less diffuse as time goes on and so we're starting to reform that focusing cone now and we're going to be passing into it um yeah end of february early march we should be, we should see a pickup not only in the speed but in the temperature and energy of those electrons right now they're all low energy so so and the really amazing thing is is the solar wind anomalies would not be happening if in fact that brown dwarf wasn't exactly right where we said it would be and the solar wind anomalies conform almost perfectly as to a radiant point coming out near uranus so uh and there's some bizarre deformities to our magnetosphere this week uh, the the actual magnetic field boundary itself is as 
is prone to distortions while the electron rings are rather symmetrical the actual magnetic field line itself is being contorted and, and bent and whipped around and creased so it's it's a there's something going on definitely with the effect of that second wind anyways and just for the new people the reason the protons are gone is because there's so much helium-3 in the solar system it wants to become helium-4 and the way it does that is by absorbing a proton helium-3 then becomes helium-4 one of the most abundant helium particles in the universe is helium-4 and those electrons are still flying around looking for something to attach to so until next time be prepared not scared.